The Narragansett Indian Monument, also called Enishkitam Paog, is located in Sprague Park in Narragansett, Rhode Island. The sculpture, standing 20 feet tall, is carved from a single Douglas fir tree and was created by the Hungarian artist Peter Wolf Toth in 1982. Toth's goal was to make one sculpture of an Indian in each of the 50 states to honor them. He made 74 monuments in the U.S. and Canada, which collectively formed the Trail of the Whispering Giants. Toth was inspired to make statues honoring indigenous peoples because he saw in their struggle a parallel to the violent repression he had experienced in his home country of Hungary. He stated at the inception of this project, quote, this is my concept of the Indians of this area. I study the Indians of the area, then visualize an Indian within the log. It is a composite of all the native people of the state, end quote. This generalization erases tribal specificities and constructs a collective image of a group of diverse peoples. Wendy Star Brown, a Narragansett tribal historian, shared her thoughts with an online source. She recalled attending the opening ceremony at the age of 12. Brown commented that, quote, while the sculpture's facial features, hairstyle, jewelry, and headdress are not incompatible with Narragansett culture and traditions, they are not particularly specific to them, end quote. Paula Dove Jennings felt differently about the monument. In 2005, Jennings was curator of the Tumaquag Indian Memorial Museum in Exeter, and also remembers when Toth first came to Rhode Island. Toth was introduced at the Tribal Council and explained his mission. It seemed to Jennings that Toth's good intentions and efforts were evidenced by the conversations he sought out and are embodied in the statue. However, it must be noted that the podium that the statue rests on was constructed by Narragansett people. Craig Little Fox Champion was one of the artisans who worked with the stone at the podium. This seems like the only collaboration Toth has sought with local community members that he's claiming to represent, and the names of the individuals are not included at the plaque at the base of the statue. The title of Toth's series, Trail of Whispering Giants, aids in the mystification of Native Americans. The use of the word whispering suppresses the voice of indigenous peoples, while the word giants mythologizes indigenous peoples, resulting in an antiquated and exoticized image. By exclusively using the figure of an old man, the statues replicate a notion of ancient and venerable wisdom. This type of misrepresentation of Native Americans through the use of Western constructed tropes originated in the 18th century with American painters such as George Catlin. This bias known as the noble savage is defined by the depiction of a male elder dressed in regalia, a headdress, and war paint. This image not only creates a false concept of what visually defines authentic indigeneity, but it also largely contributes to the the homogenization of Native North Americans as one tribe. The Narragansett Indian Monument visually embodies these aspects of homogenization and misrepresentation. Toth's replication of the noble savage trope exemplifies the pervasiveness of a problematic narrative which erases and degrades Native Americans' contribution and place in both the historical past and the current present. The plaque on the statue also illustrates this concept, with the choice to enlarge the text of sculptor Peter Toth and shrink stonework by the Narragansett Indians. This does two things. Leaving the stoneworkers unnamed states that the individuals who created the base are irrelevant to the work and the viewer. And second, it also contributes further to the generalization and ambiguity of who the Narragansett people are. This illustrates the paradox in which the Narragansett peoples are memorialized as figures of yesterday by the statue itself, despite actively surviving and thriving today. In this environment, the dead Narragansett is objectified by the statue, while the living Narragansett remains invisible and diminished. The creation of the monument by Toth, a white non-native artist, rejects the Narragansett people as capable creators and owners of their own identity and history. It portrays a continued presumption that the authoritative voice on indigenous peoples and culture lies with white artists and academics, not with living members of the tribe. This type of decentralization of Native Americans from their own cultural heritage objectifies them as subjects of observation and study, instead of narrators of their own histories. This creates a misconception that Narragansett people today are only authentically indigenous if they personify the specific visual components exemplified in the statue, such as the headdress or the war paint. This reinforces stereotypes of Indian authenticity as existing only in the past or outside of contemporary society. This leaves the viewer with the misconstrued thought that all real Indians are dead.
This therefore perpetuates the notion that Narragansett people no longer live in the area, a type of erasure that is crucial for the continuation and justification of settler colonialism. In this way, cities and states can take over land, can build parks and playgrounds and memorials like the ones surrounding the Narragansett Indian Memorial statue. In this way, indigenous rights are environmental rights. It is only due to this pervasive historical erasure and misrepresentation that government is permitted to neglect the problematic environmental and health issues that indigenous communities, including the Narragansett, continue to face. Situated on the corner of a busy intersection, the wooden statue, now worn and weathered, becomes an intriguing oddity which fades into the background of people's commute. The continual act of people passing by the Indian head creates a tone of irrelevancy, not just of the head itself, but the people it represents. The Narragansett Indian Monument is a physical manifestation of the long-enduring subliminal message of settler colonialism. However, successful or not, it is clear that artist Peter Toth did have his heart in the right place 